I think it's fair to say that anybody who has heard The Fragile by Nine Inch Nails can all agree that it's a timeless masterpiece. You'll be hard-pressed to find an album that sounds anything like it, and the production is top-notch. So needless to say, I was more than stoked when Deviations 1 was announced. And what Deviations is, it's a collection of B-sides, alternate takes, demos, tracks that didn't make the final cut of the album, and, and there's supposedly going to be more than one of these, because this is marked Deviations 1. It won on sale Christmas 2016 at $80. Supposedly it won't be released digitally or on CD, nor will it be pressed on vinyl again. That's likely a marketing scheme, but that didn't stop me from buying it. It's a 4 LP set, and it sounds magnificent. Now, just because certain songs are marked instrumental doesn't necessarily mean that they're the same songs with no vocals, because some of these songs actually have minor changes to them. In fact, I sat down and took notes of the changes that I heard between this and the real album. For instance, the ending on Somewhat Damaged, it has this techy type of sound going on. The piano has always been the most prominent feature on the frail, but here it's just piano. No synths, no orchestras, none of that. And to my ears, I'm hearing slightly more drum attack on The Wretched. Missing Places is the in-between track between The Wretched and We're In This Together, and it's an interesting precursor to the final song, We're In This Together, but it also sounds more downward spiral-esque because there are a lot more machinery sounds going on. And then there's another in-between track between Just Like You Imagine and even deeper, The March, which sounds like an outtake of The Way Out Is Through. Now what I'm noticing with these instrumental tracks is that they have a slightly different setting. It's like without the vocals they sound more organic and earthy, for lack of a better word, because you're going to pay more attention to the string instruments. Then there's another in-between track, One Way to Get There, which sounds like a precursor to Starfuckers. I mean, that's what, that's what a lot of these in-between songs sound like. They sound like the beginnings to what the final songs ended up being. I can definitely understand why a lot of these extra tracks were left off the final album, because they don't exactly fit. However, given that I've listened to this album for years and years and years, it's interesting to hear what it would have sounded like in a different universe. One of the in-between songs, however, is called Taken. And this would have been good to add to the Quake soundtrack. It definitely wouldn't have fit on the final album, though, because it has more of a drum and bass, breakbeat type of sound going on, so it definitely would have fit on the Perfect Drug versions. One of the most different sounding alternate takes on this album is La Mer. The drums and the piano sound totally different. It's like they're mic'd differently. Claustrophobia Machine is awesome, and it has awesome drums, too. You know, I really love those hard drum moments that Nine Inch Nails has. You know, perfect drug, uh, you know what you are, that type of thing. You know, this sounds like the beginning to what could have been an awesome track had it been fleshed out more. What's really convenient about this set is that it's chronological to the actual album. It doesn't start with somewhat damage and then the next song is Into the Void. Practically the same track order that the album has is featured here, just with the extra tracks in between the songs that were used. So this feels like the fragile that you're used to. Now the most notable difference I hear among any of these songs is Ripe with Decay with a drum track added. It totally changes the mood of the song. The Fragile always leaves me feeling liberated, and this was no exception. This is 150 minutes worth of music, and I wasn't bored a single second. I was always interested in hearing potential changes. 
It's a refreshing take on an album I've been listening to religiously since I was 12 years old. So to me as a diehard Nine Inch Nails fan, it was definitely worth spending $80 on. But for collectors, this is also Halo 30, so don't miss your chance. That being said, this is definitely an album that you have to make time for, but you'll be glad you did. I'm definitely looking forward to Deviations 2, and this is definitely what I can consider a stellar output.